Bienvenidos de regreso. Ahora tenemos el gusto, el honor de tener entre nosotros al doctor Marcos Villagra, quien tiene un doctorado en ciencia computacional del Instituto Nara de Ciencia y Tecnología en Japón. Eh, es profesor e investigador en la Universidad Nacional de Asunción y eh, pues es alguien a quien tengo ya varios años de conocer. Eh, muy emocionado por tenerte entre nosotros, Marcos, por tu trabajo, por la calidad científica de tu trabajo y la amabilidad con la que compartes tus resultados. Es que sin más, bienvenido. La plática de, de Marcos se titula Non-Interactive Quantum Computation with Constant Memory Space. Bienvenido, la palabra es tuya. Ok, thank you, Salvador. Uh, I got to make my, my talk in English, if you don't, if you don't mind. But of course, you can later ask questions in Spanish. Uh, uh, well, I'm from the National University of Asunción in Paraguay. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our research we're doing here. And this talk is, enti is, is entitled uh, non interactive Quantum Computation with Constant Space. This is a, a talk about theoretical computer science, actually. So it's going to be, I think, it's, I think there's another, uh, only an, another one, another, another talk on theoretical computer science. So I hope you enjoy this, right? So uh, I got this, I mean, let me, let me try first, try to define what is in a non interactive proof system, right? Um, we have interactive proof system in complexity theory, right? And uh, interactive, in an in, in interactive proof system, you have two computational uh, entities. One is a very normally, a uh, very powerful computer capable of computing non-computable functions even, that is interacting, sending messages to a, a, a weak verifier. Norma normally this weak verifier is modeled using a, a polynomial time Turing machine, right? And, uh, Normally, the, uh, this prover, what it's trying to do is to uh, convince uh, uh, the verifier that some assertion is true, right? And the verifier, using its limited resources, has to be able to tell, to, uh, to verify what the prover is saying that is actually true, right? But if the prover is lying to the weak verifier, also the verifier has to be able to, to find out that actually the prover is lying, right? And in this talk, I'm going to, no, normally, well, normally an interactive proof system, say uh, the, the prover sends a message, and then, for example, the verifier can ask questions again, and the prover send some answers, and it, they go back and forth, right? But we have a particular kind of uh, proof system called non-interactive proof system, where there is a single message, message coming from the prover, right? And uh, normally in this situation, the prover is called Merlin, and the verifier is called author for historical reasons, right? And um, and here Merlin is a very powerful computer, sends a single message to author, which is a, a very weak verifier. In, in this talk, I'm going to talk only about where the, when the verifier is a finite state automaton. And Merlin is trying to convince Arthur that something is true, but if, uh, if Merlin is lying, Ar Arthur can find out. Okay, and basically, I, I would I, I think I prepared too many slides, so I'm going to try to keep it short. Right um, here, we have well-known complexity classes. These are the stochastic languages, the the class P and P, QMA. They're from quantum Merlin author protocols with polynomial time verifiers, and they uh, they're very famous. Also, PP class. Well, uh, this famous for people working in complexity theory. Right, and by defining this new uh, non-interactive protocol, what with uh, quantum automata as verifiers, we have actually a bunch of other complexity classes that we are really interested to study. So uh, these are a bunch of new complexity classes uh, where I, I'm going to explain to this talk what all this notation means. I hope that will be clear later. Right? And uh, first, let me start defining what is a, 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 a reversal automata where it's an reversal automaton and a quantum automaton, right? And here we have uh, the classical definition of a finite state automaton. The only restriction is that now the, we have a forbidden construction. We don't allow transitions like this, right? Because what, what, what you want to do is to uh, reverse the computation, right? So if I'm in this state, I don't know from which state I came, right? If it was from this one or this one. So this I cannot allow in, my constru in the construction of a reversible finite automata. <clears throat> and when I write one way, what it means is that uh, we have the input tape and the input tape is scanned from left to right and it never stops. 
right? That means one way. Some people call that strict one way or real time. Right? And I, 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 don't, I don't know if I have to explain what quantum computing is. Uh, this is a very, what, what I call a quantum computing in a nutshell. It's very simple. Nope. Classical computer is just uh, a, a for at least the, the very simple case of finite dimensional spaces. You have a, a vector, a, a matrix multiplying a vector, and in classical computer, you have a stochastic matrix multiplying a vector uh, that is uh, normalized with respect to the L1 norm. And in quantum computing, what you have is uh, is just vector matrix multiplication with unitary matrix, and uh, uh, it, and the vectors are normalized with respect to the L2 norm. So that's the only difference. I mean, for, for for if we want to study quantum automata, the simplest way probably of uh, of uh, quantum computation we can have. Now, a two-way quantum finite automaton is like any other automaton. We have a set of inner states, an alphabet, and a starting state, a transition function, and a set of accepting and rejected states. Right? And two-way means that the input tape can be scanned from left to right. It's not like one way. I, I say that one way move from left to right always. Two way means that I can choose if I want to go back and read a, a, a previous scan symbol or just stay still, for example. So normally my transition function has to say, okay, if I'm in this state, I read this input, and I, then I move to this state, and I move my input uh, my input tape head in this direction. And to all that, I assign a complex value, right? complex number. And we have to translate this uh, transition function to a unitary matrix. So we, ha there, we, have to uh, we have to define some unitarity condition on the transition function in order to have a, a quantum finite automaton. So uh, now let me define um, uh, what is an Merlin author proof system. So remember, we have a very powerful computer capable of computing even non-computable functions. And we have a verifier, which will be Either a very restricted you know, a quantum finite automaton, right? And uh, this quantum automaton could be a reversible automaton or could be a quantum automaton, right? And also, ah, before I forget, I, I, I define here a pure state quantum automaton, actually. We are not using mixed states here. If you allow mixed states, the thing completely changes here. So I'm just talking about pure state quantum automaton. So in this interaction, we have an input tape and a proof tape. Right, and Merlin has access to the input tape also, and the way Merlin sends messages to Arthur is using is via the, the proof tape. So whenever uh, there is an input, Merlin sends the input, then writes uh, uh, a message which uh, is normally called a proof or certificate. Merlin writes the uh, the message here, so Arthur can then read using, uh, for example, a single input tape for both symbols in both tapes, right? So in, in this case, uh, the transition function will be injective if we want if we want Arthur to be a reversible automaton. And this uh, this is a very nice way to define non-deterministic reversible computation. And if we allow Arthur to execute, to, 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 to use the entire matrix, we have a quantum automaton. So it's very simple. And this is the classical definition from complexity theory, where you have that a language is recognized if it uh, is if, if if these two conditions are fulfilled, right? If uh, if the, the 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 input is in the language, then uh, there is a message that that Merlin can send to Arthur, and Arthur would accept the input with high probability. But if the input is not in the language, there there is no way that Merlin can convince Arthur. That uh, that that has, has to accept the input. So Arthur will always reject the input with a high probability. And normally, when um, uh, Arthur and Merlin are classical, we call this uh, MA proof system. But if both are quantum computers, then we call this a uh, QMA proof system or just QMA protocol. So using these uh, definitions of Merlin and Arthur and the interaction between them, we can define all this bunch of uh, com uh, complexity, new complexity classes, where we can have, for example, the one-way non-deterministic reversible automaton class, right? And uh, there are some technicalities that I'm going to omit in this uh, talk just for, for the sake of time. For example, uh, we can for also, the, the thing is that 
automata are really sensitive to the to the definition, right? For example, in a just a normal one-way non-deterministic reversal final automaton, uh, for example, if I if I always for, force the automaton to read its entire epoch, the complicity class completely changes, like here. And we can show a strict inclusions between here. So for example, here we can show that this class one and an N RFA is equal to the regular languages, but if we force CLA means classical acceptance. I don't think I include the definition here. I'm going to explain later about this, right? If I force the automaton to read in its entire input, then uh, actually the complicity class is strictly included inside the regular language. And we also have the quantum Merlin author proof system where we can have as a verifier a one QFA or a two QFA as a verifier, right? And actually we can do more things like uh, changing the way the Arthur, the, the read verifier, uh, reads the proof or reads the input. So I'm going to go a little, little bit deeper about these classes here in a moment. So why do we want to do this, right? There are many open questions in quantum and final automata theory and in automata theory in general, right? And the idea to, to do this is to try to uh, use techniques from complexity theory and try to see if this, which of these techniques work to prove some of these open problems and which techniques don't, don't work, right? So the idea is to borrow ideas from classical complexity theory to uh, um, this uh, interactive proof system with weak verifiers, right? And of course, as you saw here, uh, there are many uh, ways that uh, new models, uh, we have a lot of new models for computation that are really interesting to, of study by themselves. And I, li I, I like to think like also, the, the, the thing is that with interactive protocols, those are, those, that, that, that model is the basis of, uh, of, of, of cryptographic protocols, right? So you can think about a weak verifier, for example, a, a weak quantum computer that tries to uh, discover a cheater. So that's the basis of, uh, of of cryptographic protocols. So we can actually start thinking about probably about secure nanocomputers or something like that. So uh, I think I have uh, five minutes, seven minutes maybe. So I try to I try to go really fast because I want to talk also about the, the last subject here. So uh, this is. Um, so these the things uh, we can prove, for example, that uh, non non-deterministic result finite automata are just the regular languages. Uh, like I said before, uh, if we put some restriction, like classi classical acceptance in the automaton, actually the the, com the complexity class com completely changes. And and one technical way, uh, one new technique that we develop for that is a new pumping lemma for that for non-deterministic reversible automata. So I'm not going to go into that. Into, so I'm going to try to go faster here. In the case of uh, quantum or QMA proof system, what we have is that when the very far is a one-way QFA, it's just also the regular languages. And the idea to prove that is that Merlin cannot cheat Arthur with local operation. Why do I mean that? This, this I, I do want to show you because it's really interesting. To, to show the, the equality with the class of the deterministic finite automaton, so we have author, which is a one QFA, just a one-way quantum finite automaton, and Merlin has access to the proof tape, right? Like I said, but Merlin can actually cast its own workspace, right? So Merlin probably can create some entanglement between its inner state, its own workspace with the proof tape. So when Arthur start, starts reading from the proof tape, the entanglement with Merlin and the proof tape, can, Merlin can use it to its, to, to, to its advantage to try to trick Arthur. But we show that that cannot, that cannot happen. And here are some other more technical stuff that I want to skip. And so I mentioned that we have the QMA proof system. And we have so a new, a bunch of new classes like these ones that are here. And what we did here is like you have the input and the proof tapes separate, and you can have two independent heads, one for the input tape and another one for the proof tape. So they, and they can move uh, individually, right, independently, right? And you can also bound the, the, uh, the amount of steps the automaton does 
right? In order when it runs its, uh, its computation. Like for example, in this class here, we have a two QFA with a two-way proof, meaning that the proof moves the input, the, 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 the did I run out of time? Or what? <laughs> okay. Um, a two, I hear some noise. Is that from Ermit or? Okay. Do you hear me? Oh, you still have, yeah. You have 10 more minutes. And uh, I think it was your, con your internet connection actually was failing. But now we're all right. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Great, great. Actually, we have a storm outside. <laughs> um, uh, well, I was saying that, uh, well, we have a bunch of new classes. And um, so the idea here is to, for example, for the QMA protocols with a two QFA verifier, we, ha we can Excuse have- Marcos. Marcos, I'm very sorry to interrupt you again, but what we can see now is only your face. We cannot, we cannot see your presentation. So you okay. may have to refresh uh, your uh, 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 yes, yes, yes. Uh, browser. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I think that when it, the connection cut off, now it should be fine, right? Let yeah, fantastic. Check. We can watch it. Now. Okay. So um, let me go faster even now. So here we have a QMA protocol with a two QFA verifier and we have a two-way proof and bounded in polynomial time. So we can do all this uh, restriction to the verifier and, and obtain new complexity classes, right? And we can actually show that, for example, that with a two QFA verifier running in polynomial time, time is included MP, while the, just the well-known QMA class with polynomial time verifier is actually, we believe is bigger than MP, right? And there are some languages that we can recognize with this, uh, these protocols that are, for example, those some stochastic languages that can be recognized with this protocol. So this is strictly large, this class is strictly larger than the stochastic language. And uh, when we allow two dependent, read, re, two dependent reading heads, right, one on the, for the input table, another one for the, for the proof table, we can prove things, uh, some conditional lower bounds. Like we, we were able to prove actually that CNS sat can be recognized by these QMA protocols. The problem is that uh, why does this doesn't show that this class equals MP, for example? Because we have to do a very tricky coding of the SAT instance, and plus the QMA protocol doesn't compute the reduction, a polynomial a card reduction. So that so that's why it doesn't show that this class equals MP, for example. But we can prove uh, some unconditional some, some conditional lower bounds like this. Some summary for this part, let me think, I don't know how much time I have, but uh, this is the, the, the whole, oh, sorry, the whole slew of new classes, complexity classes we have by just work playing with this uh, non directive protocols. The last idea I want to show you is something I, I'll be working with uh, Alejandro diaz Carlos from University of Buenos Aires, he's going to present later. Um, also for in this event. And here we 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 what we try we try to do was to change a, a little bit the idea of having a, a, a having Merlin sending a message to Arthur. Ima, Im, imagine that now we have a quantum computer and the, you know that the, the computer runs a, a finite number of operations. And imagine that Arthur now can modify, for example, the execution time for each of the operation. He's a, he Arthur, oh, sorry, Merlin has somehow access to the Hamiltonian governing the, uh, the quantum, this quantum computation, and he can adjust the touch for each operation the, 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 uh, the quantum computer is running. So we call that, instead of calling Merlin, we call it a scheduler, and now Merlin, what it does is to compute a time schedule saying, for example, this operation run it for five seconds, this other run it for 10 seconds, and so on, right? And we ask the question, what can, what can such a, uh, uh, protocol or system can do, right? We call this a classically time controlled quantum automat. And uh, the, the, this is the formal definition. I'm going to skip this part. It's not, it's very, well, we, we actually, we were able to show that if there is no time dependency, it's just a, just a regular uh, uh, quantum automaton, but actually uh, you, 
uh, if you allow tan dependence, you can actually compute some non-computable functions, right? And uh, and then what we did was to okay, well, what can we do now? So let, let's let's put some restrictions to Merlin. What he what kind of time scale he can compute, right? So we decided we we, we constructed a, a, a schematics for the the Merlin computing a time schedule for the automaton, where it looks something like this. It has a decider. It's a, a, it's a machine that is just tells you yes or no for some language. It can know the size of an input, and then it has a writer. The writer, what it does is just to compute a time scale that fits the, 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 the quantum computer. And all the computation is basically done here by the decider. And what we did was to actually start uh, putting some computational restriction to the decider and what happens. Right? And we were able to show that some, uh, not all languages, but some non-regular languages can be computed by this, uh, this uh, automaton. And the idea is just that uh, the, the time is somehow goes into the amplitudes of the, uh, into the computation. And if we eliminate the decider, for example, an interesting result is that uh, it's very similar to something called, known in, a, in, in, in complexity theory, known as advice. So uh, just to close this talk then, since I have maybe three minutes, um, which I show you some, uh, 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 what, what are the models of non-interactive quantum computing? Uh, uh, and these complexity cl classes heavily depends on the uh, underlying automaton model. And I try to show you some uh, new model that we've been working on, on how to exploit the continuous time for quantum computation, right? And this talk is basically based on these two papers, if you have any interest, right? That's it. Okay, thank you very much, Marcos, for your um, presentation, for sharing with us um, your findings. And now let me see if we have some questions here. Just hold on one sec. Um, we don't have any at the moment. Please um, feel free to write down, to type uh, any questions you may have for the audience, of course. Oh, here it is. Uh, Christian um, Sousa from the University of Cordoba, uh, former speaker, he asks, how does the automation change if using mixed states? Yes, the, I, I, well, it's, you know, it's not a definitely yes, but I think so. Uh, I, people are, are not studying the model with uh, where the verifier is a, is, is a, is a uh, mixed state quantum final automaton. You can find in, in archive uh, the, how to define, uh, it's not difficult, right? A, a quantum automaton with mixed states, and you can plug it in into the, this protocol. And then I, I, I completely believe that the classes will completely change. Some classes probably will be the same, but I don't know. It's com you can write a new paper about that, definitely. Yeah, and what would be the intuition about it? You know, why, why would classes change if we were using mixed states? Uh, well, well the, the, my intuition is that, there are results about mixed state quantum automata and mm -hmm. pure state quantum automata, and they are completely different classes. And uh, I think that, well, naturally, I expect that to extend to the, 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 the protocols, right? Okay, I understand. Thank uh, you very much. First, uh, our result is that the mixed state quantum mm -hmm. automata recognize more than regular language. That's a neat result. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Um, any other question uh, you may have in the audience, please? Um, Well, I think this is it. Um, there are no further questions. So again, Marcos, we would like to thank you very much for um, your presentation, for kindly accepting our invitation to join Quantum Latino, this very first version of what is now and expects, uh, expected to be for a long time the largest quantum event 
in Latin America. So it was truly good to see you again. Thanks a lot and um, have a great day. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye bye. Oh, sorry, before you leave. Oh, God, he's gone now. Oh. No, I, I, <laughs> well, I yeah, have because we have a couple of minutes uh, still here. And there's another question here from Ivan Fernandez, who asks, could you give us some application for QA? I suppose it stands for quantum annealing. Uh, uh, let, let me read there. Could you give us an application for quantum annealing? Wow, it's uh, quantum annealing is a different computational model. Um, and oh, quantum uh, automata, you mean, sorry. Quantum, OK, ah, application of quantum automata. Good question. I I don't know. I have only theoretical applications. I mean, probably you're referring to real real world applications. This is very academic. I mean, uh, the, the applications I have in mind are theoretical. Like, I, 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 for example, I put one one of, my, one of my slides that I was looking to answer to try to use some tricks from classical automata for for, for classical complexity theory to solve problem in in in, in quantum automata. So, or probably extend the tricks from quantum automata to classical complexity theory. So those are theoretical academic uh, applications mostly. Yeah. All right. Okay, thank you very much now and yeah. uh, good to talk to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah,